Thank you very much, Patty. And I wanted to tell everyone that today we are in the Hendricks County landscape of my friend Coletta Koshiba. She is a master gardener and a master naturalist. And today we are talking about why you should make some good shrub choices for your boomer landscape, because it can really cut back on the work that you have to do and add some other elements as well, right? Oh, that's definitely true. There are lots of shrubs that are petite, dwarf, if you will, uh, and I, the ones we're going to look at today, I, I never maintain as far as trimming. I don't like to work too hard. Yeah, we like that. So it takes up some extra room, which means like maybe some less mowing. And if you can just let them go on their own, they're fine. Now let's talk about this beautiful, beautiful shrub behind us. What okay. is this? This is called a high bush cranberry. It has beautiful white uh, umbra of white flowers that smell very good in the springtime. Then it develops these beautiful berries, which will be bright red. The leaf color is many shades of reds, and then in the fall, and then in January, yet the red berries are on. The birds save them for later. So you're going to get some wildlife activity with them Excellent. too, as well. Excellent. Yeah, and you actually could eat them. Yeah, and I imagine that this looks really beautiful in snow. Yes as well. Wonderful. Okay, let's move on to our next one. Coletta, what are we looking at here? This is a big, beautiful plant with these panicles of flowers on it. Yeah, it's called an oak leaf hydrantia. It's a native hydrantia. It's one that your viewers would like to buy because you never again have to trim it. And it always blooms. And that plant has been there probably 15 years. It was probably three foot tall by wide when I bought it. And it just keeps getting be more beautiful. And what does it do through the seasons? Well, the panicles of flowers change different colors. And then in the fall, I especially like it because it has beautiful purple red leaves on it that last one month because I timed them this year. And just to point out in front, we have the, the pretty little orange flowers of uh, jewelweed, which you leave in your garden. That's right. It's a native plant that the hummingbirds love. Coletta, you always say that it's a good idea to have some evergreen in the garden as well, and I think this is a great example. Tell us about this plant. It's, it's an, one of the averbides. It's a dwarf cultivar, uh, something for the birds to hide in during the winter, and pretty to look at. How old would you say this one is? I would say that one is probably 15 years old. It was probably one foot by one foot when I purchased it, so it doesn't grow fast. And this is about as big as it's going to get. Yes, that's about as big as it should get. I like the um, I like the form of it, and um, it has a really nice variation of color from inside to the tips of the of the ends of the plant. It sure does. And finally, Coletta, this is one of my favorite plants in the landscape. I actually have a natural one at my own home. Tell us what this is. It's called Beautyberry. It, the flowers on it are very inconspicuous, a very pale pink. And then in the fall, it shows off by getting all berries in the same spot right here at the axil of the leaves. And they'll be smaller than a pea size, kind of a reddish purple that is unbelievably beautiful. This is easy shrub. It's a, a native shrub. You can cut it to the ground in March and it'll grow up again. So I never fertilize or water it in these gardens. These have been excellent suggestions, Coletta. I can't wait to come back and see you again. Oh, I hope you do. Thanks so much. Uh -huh. I'm Shannon Cagle, the Weekend Gardener for Broomer TV.